welcome to Tales of Honor Podcast, a podcast dedicated to telling the true stories of every recipient of the Medal of Honor. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tales of Honor Podcast. I'm your host, Christoph Ambrosch, and today's episode is episode number 292. Today is also March 25th, or National Medal of Honor Day. I hope you took the time today to check out all the other resources that are out there going over many other stories, some of which I've covered and many of which I have not, as well as taking the time to look over the fundraiser by the National Medal of Honor Museum over on their Facebook page. And uh, I hope you also gave a moment of honor at 3.25 p.m. Today I'll give you a little history lesson on the Medal of Honor Day it was originally introduced into the House in uh, on the 24th of September 1990. Then the Senate Committee on Judiciary Discharge gave unanimous consent on the 28th of October. Then it made it to the President on November 9th, 1990, and President Bush signed it into law on the 15th of November 1990. This was with the 101st Congress. Uh, Public Law Number 101-564. The text which reads, 101st Congress of the United States of America at the second session, begun and held at the city of Washington on Tuesday, the 23rd day of January, 1990, an act to designate March 25th, 1991, as National Medal of Honor Day. Whereas the Medal of Honor is the highest distinction that can be awarded by the President in the name of Congress to members of the armed forces who have distinguished themselves conspicuously by gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of their lives above and beyond the call of duty. Whereas only a few of the millions of men and women who have served the nation in war, military operations, or other armed conflicts have received the Medal of Honor, Whereas the first Medal of Honor awards were presented to six men on March 25th, 1863 by the Secretary of War, where it is appropriate to honor the heroic recipients of the Medal of Honor. Whereas public awareness of the importance of the Medal of Honor has declined in recent years, and whereas the designation of National Medal of Honor Day will focus the efforts of national, state, and local organizations striving to foster public appreciation and recognition of Medal of Honor recipients, Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled that March 25, 1991 is designated as National Medal of Honor Day, and the President is authorized and requested to issue a proclamation calling on the people of the United States to observe the day with appropriate ceremonies and activities. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Vice President of the United States, and President of the Senate. So there you go. That's a little history into the uh, the bill that then became law, making today the 30th National Medal of Honor Day to be celebrated. And now we'll move on to episode 292, taking place back in World War I. And now, a tale of honor. Richard was born in New York City on the 28th of August, 1897, and he had a brief professional boxing career, winning 12 fights. At the age of 18, Richard enlisted in the New York Army National Guard in 1916, and he served with the 69th Infantry Regiment in Texas during the Pancho Villa Expedition in support of the Mexican Revolution. The 69th Infantry Regiment was redesignated as the 165th Infantry when they were deployed to Europe during World War I, and it was Richard's actions as a sergeant leading a reconnaissance mission in France that would earn him the Medal of Honor. The citation reads, In advance of an assaulting line, he attacked a detachment of about 25 of the enemy. In the ensuing hand-to-hand encounter, he sustained pistol wounds, but heroically continued in the advance, during which he received additional wounds. But, with great physical effort, he remained in active command of his detachment. Being again wounded, he was forced by weakness and loss of blood to be evacuated, but insisted upon being taken first to the battalion commander in order to transmit to him valuable information relative to enemy positions and the disposition of our men. Because of the information Richard brought back, U.S. troops were able to destroy the German artillery, and he was then hospitalized for his wounds, but then left the hospital in order to rejoin his unit against doctor's orders. 
He continued to serve until he was wounded again, and he remained in the hospital, this time in the States, and until after the end of the war. Richard refused recommendations to amputate his legs and was able to eventually walk unaided. In 1921, while recuperating in Fordham Hospital in the Bronx, Richard received the Medal of Honor for his actions from Ferdinand Falk, Supreme Allied Commander during the war, in a ceremony in nearby Fordham University. Richard was also commissioned to second lieutenant, and his time in service ended two years later. Richard went on to attend courses in construction at the City College of New York, and during the construction of the George Washington Bridge, he worked as a concrete pourer. He also worked in sales and purchased a liquor store while also giving speeches on behalf of New York Republican candidates during fundraiser dinners and other events. Richard was also active in organizations such as the Catholic War Veterans, Disabled American Veterans, Veterans of Foreign Wars, and the American Legion, going on to serve as the Executive Director of the Congressional Medal of Honor Society. During World War II, he was employed by the Office of Strategic Service, the predecessor to the Central Intelligence Agency, to help investigate potential German spies in New England and New York. The head of the OSS, William Donovan, had been Richard's commander during World War I. Richard married Estelle Johnson in 1921, and they had one son, William, who would go on to serve in the U.S. Army during World War II. His sister married Richard's first sergeant, Edward Guiney, who received the Distinguished Service Cross for actions during the same time as Richard, and he'd received his DSC during the same ceremony as Richard's Medal of Honor. Richard William O'Neill died at the age of 84 on the 9th of April, 1982, in a nursing home in Valhalla, New York. He is buried in the Gate of Heaven Cemetery in Hawthorne, New York, Section 22, Plot 488, Grave 19. His wife joined him three years later. And that was a tale of honor. Thank you for listening to Tales of Honor Podcast. Head on over to talesofhonorpodcast.com where you can read these stories, see other ways to support the show, and easily share a story with your friends and family. Tales of Honor Podcast is written and produced by Christoph Ambrosch, and theme song, A New Beginning, is by Ben Sound. If you have any questions or comments, you can send them to talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, I'm Christoph Ambrosch. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.